Let's uh, let's take a look back here. You'll be on that side. I'm going to be on this. Oh, side. Oh, that's good. I like that. And I'm not going to trip. Oh, I use these things too. The uh, the little library. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I have in my theater as well. Um, actually, I'll stand here and we'll focus in on you. Let's start with the turntable. Sure. That you have up top, and if you yeah, just so there we go. Right. This is a turntable which uh, uh, I had recommended to my father as far back as 1979. And based on the huge number of uh, records being vinyl or uh, uh, in some cases 78s, uh, he would play records every single day of the year. And sometimes two, three, four, five records every day of the year. Hence the enormous collection. But, you know, I had an early understanding of what it took in, before CDs ever came around to get the, the maximum sound mm -hmm. quality out of something so fragile as an LP. Uh, so this is a, you know, slightly modified Technics uh, SP-15 which is one of the few tables at that time that Techniques is a direct drive manufacturer put out that had a 78 RPM speed on it. So and we can play the really old. So we can play the really old. And in spite of the fact that these are, you know, sometimes considered to, you know, uh, be restricted in frequency response and scratchy and so forth, with the right stylus and properly cleaned, a 78 or a vinyl record can sound remarkably like a, a brand new digital recording but analog and without any of the the inherent characteristics, the digital limits in the sound. Would you change the cartridge for the 78? I would. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that would do the same thing. He had uh, one of the big radio turntables. Uh-huh, the 16-inch transcription yeah. pieces, and he sure. Would, he would uh, change uh, cartridges for when because he used to do a 70s, 78 mu radio show. I love Saturday it. Saturday nights. Next, we have the Muse, which is a, a, a grail of video files everywhere. They're They're tough to find. They were tough to get originally. And this was what should have been the standard for high definition format before we wound up with 720p and 1080i and everything else. Exactly. At a time period when um, uh, the Japanese were the only ones with a high definition uh, video format in commercial uh, distribution, uh, Pioneer, of course, being the uh, distributor of the uh, highest quality NTSC video and, and uh, stereo and multi track audio, naturally had to come up with a high definition version. So they took their existing Laserdisc format and they simply speeded the disc up, added an orange type laser instead of a red, and some significant enough uh, 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 enhancements to the video circuitry so that it basically is the first and only version of a commercial high def format with uh, uh, available recordings to the public that you could get such as this. Oh. Yeah. Which, of course, remains the only version of this in high definition unless it shows up on cable or satellite. Steven Spielberg, Frank Marshall, are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> we really need to have this on Blu-ray at this point. Um, yeah? Is, is that enough light? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, naturally, being that I've been involved with... Uh, you know, projection televisions and high-end uh, audio and photography and so forth. The, the moment that the, you know, Muse Laserdisc came out, I'd already been collecting Laserdisc since 1979. It's time to get high definition in here, even though the only sets that could play it back at the at the time that this came back were some of those Sony projectors, like I mentioned, like the G90 or the more diminutive uh, D50. But all the same, you know, high definition as opposed to, you know, NTSC and in an era when this came out in 1995 that was still two years before DVD even yeah, came and out. They were, it was actually uh, anamorphic. Exactly. As well, and the Muse was delivered by satellite in Japan. And they had, uh, there was a, a, a system in the United States um, that was high def all the time that was satellite delivered that finally died. Right. And I bought one of their receivers for a song and now I use it with C-band to get high definition. All right, the next piece, the Laserdisc Elite Player. This would have been the equivalent piece that came out just a few years before this. It was commercially available all over the world, the LDS-2. And very much like the, uh, the uh, HLDX-0 is built like a tank and weighs, I think, upwards of 80 pounds. This one weighs almost 100 pounds. But it's such a solid performer with conventional NTSC laserdisc. And in spite of the fact that DVD has come out and we've gone to uh, digital cable and so forth, there is a place for these, uh, you know... Uh, high-end uh, media uh, software, including but not limited to Laserdisc, we can go to DVHS, you mm -hmm. know, on the other side of the track later, that, uh, you know, watching an NTSC Laserdisc at 40i can be a truly amazing thing if the, uh, if the quality of the transfer were done well. And I can think of um, at least one really, really great concert uh, film, which was Laurie Anderson's Home of the Brave, 
which is just phenomenal on a, on the Laserdisc copy. I think it was only mastered once, mm -hmm. you know, right after the the film showed up in 1987, 88, something like that. I haven't seen it, but I'm familiar with the title. And you know, it's just this amazing quality of being enveloped, even by low resolution video. Gotcha. By the way, it was Unity Motion was the name. Oh, of the Unity number. Motion, yeah, yeah absolutely. I have, I have, I still have one of the receivers. And there you have the only LD player that would take two discs, which was great if you had a two-disc set. Exactly. And it would play both sides as oh, well as like switch that. between like disc one and disc two. So you load the two discs in, you tell it to play, and it would have a uh, an alpha or a beta turn mechanism inside that would, you know, progressively, uh, you know, go from one side to the other and then to the third side and then to the fourth, all basically without stopping. Yeah, a great player. Now we have a, a gem amongst the uh, the ruins here. The <laughs> RCA CED SK400 uh, video disc player, which was the rival to Laserdisc, um, but ultimately was killed off by RCA and just went into the dustbin of history. What's interesting about this, as opposed to how HD DVD has been thrown under the bus by Paramount and Universal, right. um, they continued to press discs for this up to a year after they, they halted production on the player. Which is almost ridiculous. But, yeah, but we, were, didn't... we were selling them, we were yeah. moving them and stuff. Um, but I, it's, it was their interactive player. You and I, I didn't think you would have this, and I brought a disc to demo with it, but lo and behold, we both have the same player. <laughs> I have the interactive discs and you don't. That's true. Um, let's go over to this side. All right.